Hey guys, how are you doing? So today in this video, I want to talk to you about how to patch, repair, thinning and bold areas in your lawn so you can keep it nice and thick. So we renovated this lawn uh, a few months ago just as we were going into a heat wave and because it's on a bit of a slope and the heat um, it struggled a bit in a few places so we've just got a little bit of thinning there and we've got a little bit of thinning down here where it's just thinned a lot of this is from the shrubs as well and the guy also had some issues with ants and grubs in the lawn all around this section so that kind of just devastated a lot of this down here so we put some turf solve on for the customer and we gave him a bottle of turf solve so what we're doing now now we've got those under control everything's coming through and it's actually nice and green if you would have seen this six months ago it was flat bare barren full of weeds now we've got some grass coming through so we're just going to basically um, get these areas fixed and patched up with some overseeding and top dressing and some preparation through scarifying or raking and in general it's not too bad there are still thin bits here there and everywhere but regular mowing and cutting not too short will get this lawn looking well also a fungicide would help um, or a good feed just to help bring this grass along so first thing we're going to do we're going to give it a mow because we want it nice and short so that the customer doesn't have to mow for two or three weeks and disturb any seed work what we've done so let's get that done Grass in my coffee. Amazing how good it looks. Actually, it looks pretty damn good. Even though we haven't put a cylinder mower on, we're just mowing it as regular. Looks pretty damn sweet. So the question I get asked a lot is, can we just throw seed straight down onto the ground and will it germinate? Do we need to put anything on top of it? Do we need to prepare the ground? This is what I'm going to show you in this video. Keep watching. Right, you're going to need a few tools. At the worst, you just need a metal spring rake. The one with the bar going across the middle keeps this nice and stiff. If you get one with the handle that moves like that to make it thinner and wider fan, I find they're very flimsy and they're just, they're not very good. It's just my personal opinion. So, this one I've already started to prepare. Um, what we've done, we've just literally raked the ground so we can see bare soil. So wherever it's going thin, you need seeds to go in. Remember that. You rake the ground. Okay, it's like a farmer's field and that's a perfect seed bed to get your seeds into because the seeds need to touch soil. All right, so this is pretty much done and sorted out. There's a couple of stones there, just gonna get them out of the way. But if your seeds are touching soil and they're pressed in with a roller and then there is a compost dressing on top then they will germinate as long as you keep them damp for two or three weeks 
it is as simple as that so literally any bare areas just a quick rake just to loosen it up and expose the soil It's a bit thin there, a bit of a rake, and you rake it all off, so you've got nice openly exposed soil. I like these bulldog plastic leaf rakes just for clearing up. I've tried lots of rakes, this is my favourite. We just rake that off of the uh, the soil area. So what we've got now, so what we've got now, as you can see, it's all raked like a farmer's field, and it's exposed, and we've raked off. That is the first stage you need to do. I'm just going to show you on an area that we haven't touched yet. All this bottom edge here. Okay, it's thin, it's bare, there's a few bits of moss in there. So let's show you the process. I also recommend these Wolf Garten Scarifying Rakes. I think they're about £20. The handle is separate, but they've got a 10 year guarantee on them. And you can interchange all the heads with lots of different attachments. Really good bit of kit to be fair. I'll leave a link in the description to these tools that I use. So literally, you push and then pull it back. Push and pull it back. Nice and lightly. And you can see there, just took some of the thatch out of there. I'm not pressing down, I'm just lightly dragging it across the surface. And it does the work. Now I'm pressing down a bit heavier, now I've got the flow. Some areas are got a bit of moss on because it's in the shade and it'll be damp because all the water rolls down the hill so then we get the leaf rake and we just rake off now if you want to do your whole lawn like this you can you can just give it a light scarifying a bit of overseeding a bit of top dressing So when you are raking a lawn, if it's done regular or if it's only just been renovated like this was a few months ago, there won't be a lot of thatching, just a few thin areas. So just a, a basic rake is enough. But if your lawn hasn't been done for a while, when you rake, a lot is going to come out and you may end up with a um, completely brown floor and all you're seeing is the thatch, you're not actually seeing the soil underneath. You've got to get down through that thatch layer and you have to expose the soil. I can't show you this on here, but keep raking, keep raking, keep raking until you can see soil underneath. And if it's still thick with thatch and all you can see is grooves, 
then you need to scarify in a different direction to get as much of that thatch layer out as you can so the soil is more exposed. So the point is, when you scarify regularly, it's much easier and it comes out faster and it recovers faster. If you scarify once every five years, you're going to have a big build-up of thatch in the lawn and there's more work involved to get it out and then it looks bare when it's been done. So you've got to keep on top of it. It's as simple as that. So now we've had a rake, I've raked out the, the bare spots, but I've also done a very thin um, raking on the rest of the lawn or most of the lawn, just so we can, bit of a gentle overseed on the rest of the lawn, so that it all blends in rather than having patches. Because we're using a slightly different manufacturer of seed now, um, it's still a general amenity seed, which is a similar type, but the actual seeds themselves will be just slightly different. So if I overseed the whole lawn, as well as just the patches, it's gonna blend in a bit and not look so obvious. Um, but that's why I say to most people, just stick with a general amenity seed for most purposes and your lawn will be fine. If you're wanting the pristine, perfect lawn, then you've got to go for, for bent grasses. That's like for, for golf courses. Fescue grasses are the ornamental grasses, but they struggle more in the heat. Um, there's a lot more to it, but we'll get on to the next stage now. We're going to overseed it. I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm just going to scatter some seeds down and then we're going to get some top dressing on. Roller it in. Job done. Just a couple of handfuls and just shake your hands. That is it. That is it. One little bit there. So, it's as simple as that. We're just scattering the seed across the bare areas and then I'm going to do a very quick flick of the seed at a lighter ratio on the rest of the lawn. So, will grass seed grow if you just throw it down on the ground? Yes, sometimes it will grow. The seed is actually touching the soil down there, but it's at mercy of the weather. If it rains heavy, it's going to wash it away. If it winds strong, it's going to blow it away. The birds are going to come down and eat it and enjoy it. And it's not firmly pressed into the soil. It's just touching it. So we're taking all these things out of the equation, which all add up to success. You've got to tick off as many of these things as you can. Good seed to soil contact. So the soil has got to be exposed. The seed's got to touch the soil. So we scatter it down. We press it in with a roller which I'm going to do at the end and then we put a top dressing on so I'm using compost but you can also use topsoil just regular topsoil so there's lots of ways to apply top dressing the cheap obvious way £2.50 just get a handful between both hands and just rub just rub between your hands as though you've just won £40,000 Oh yes, 40 grand. Get in. Oh, 40 grand. And we've got a really good dressing on there. And that is it. That is as simple as it gets. Once you've achieved that, you can see the seeds are covered. Okay. We will go over at the end with the back of a brush or a lute or a rake just to gently move some of the compost off the top of the grass. Although this isn't too bad, it's actually touching the ground. But you just a very gentle rubbing over at the end, which you'll see, just to work it down so it goes down in between the blades of grass and touches the soil. So you can do it by hand. But uh, if you're a business or you haven't got a lot of time, then you can use any whatever tools there are.
So what you're left with are all the twigs and all the uh, stuff that hasn't fully rotted down yet. Perfect mulch, absolutely brilliant that. So now we've gone over the whole lawn and it has taken me, if I'd not been filming, I would say about four minutes, five minutes at the most. This would normally take about 20 minutes. Um, so from a business point of view, I cannot fault the Lansy spreader for the amount of time it's going to save. And I genuinely do believe that um, that is coming with me on all of my renovation jobs. Um, so yeah, we've got to work this in now. Give it a roller and if there's any other bits which are looking a bit bare we'll put a bit more compost on and job done so i'm not saying you can use a rake the back edge of a rake or a brush to work the top dressing in if you look at this it's all nestled amongst the top of the grass if we do this, you see how it's gone down to ground level? That is what you're after. And then it's covering the seeds. Same there. Just work it down. So we're going to achieve the same thing because I haven't brought my loot. You can use the back edge of a rake or you can use a brush. Now a rake will do it. Just drag it across, backwards and forwards, and it works it in. A brush, being bigger and softer, is a bit more efficient. Right, so this last step is optional, but definitely recommended. is to just firm everything down. So the seeds are definitely squashed in and touching that soil really well. When you've got good seed to soil contact, the seeds will germinate with a better success rate. I'm gonna use a roller, but if you don't have a roller, you can literally just walk up and down and firm it down with your feet. Just take your time on the bare spots. If it's slightly wet, that'll lift up and stick to your mower, uh, your roller. And another thing as well, don't turn the roller because it moves the compost and seed mixture, especially on the bare spots. So what you're going to do, you either go off the garden and just like ever so slightly work across a couple of centimetres at a time. So there you have it guys, that is how you overseed thinning lawn, an existing lawn, just to fill in any bare thin areas 
and get some more seeds in to help it through winter. If you've got bare spots in your lawn, it's going to encourage weeds and moss to get in. So you need to try and keep it thick all year round as much as possible, especially going into winter. You don't want thin bare areas going into winter. So all that's got to be done now is the customer's got to water this twice a day at this time of year. It's, it's not too hot and it's not too cold and it's a little bit damp. So the idea is to keep your seeds damp for the first two to three weeks roughly. Now, which means coming out in the morning and on an evening, forget about fungal issues regarding evening watering, but just keep it wet and keep it damp for the first few weeks until that seed has germinated. Two to three weeks. Once that has happened, you can start to reduce the watering. On this lawn, we'll be absolutely fine in about four or five weeks, ready for winter. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please smash that like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. It'd be very much appreciated. Um, and this lawn, it's just, it's going to be fine. See you on the next one.